Chair Mel, I'm President and CEO of Griffin Hospital. And I appreciate all of you being here today, and I certainly appreciate legislators who are here with us and who are helping us look for solutions to what's become a, a very large problem for the industry. Um, many of you know that in 2012, the state instituted a provider tax, and it, when it did, it benefited both the state and Connecticut's hospitals. It actually brought in $125 million of revenue to the state and $50 million to hospitals. But since then, it's become a bit of an abomination. And as of right now, the impact on Connecticut's hospitals is over a half a billion dollars. That's not what was intended in 2012 when it was really a partnership between the industry and government to try and solve a serious problem. This has serious implications, as you've heard today, and it's impacting our ability as an industry, as 28 or 29 Connecticut hospitals, to fulfill our mission and serve the residents of the state of Connecticut. And frankly, we're concerned. I know we've raised concern in 2013 and 14 and 15, and I'm sure some of you are saying, well, this is more of the same. Frankly, last year you heard from the administration that hospitals are making significant profit, and they have to, as an industry, contribute to the solution. We've got a serious budget problem. And frankly, what the administration said is the industry had generated $900 million in profit, so the tax is reasonable. Now, of course, you know that the hospital industries was paying a tax, and again, hospitals in Connecticut, for the most part, are not for profit and should be tax exempt, and they wound up paying a tax that was by far multiples of what for-profit companies in Connecticut pay. But that aside, we said last year, that's not true, hospitals are not making excessive profits, and this tax is undermining the financial vi viability of Connecticut's hospitals. And we were dismissed. So fast forward, we're now looking at 2015, and by the way, those excessive profits of $900 million, which again, wasn't a factual number, and we won't get into that, but information was just released. It's on the Office of Healthcare Access website. Connecticut hospitals have submitted their financial results for 2015. And if you look at the aggregate profit from all hospital activities, it's $300 million for 2015. The impact of what's happening this year is essentially $300 million. That's what's at stake for Connecticut hospitals. That's the additional burden that's being imposed on the industry in 2016. If the industry generated $300 million in profit last year, and even that's overstated because there are some one-time events that occurred, and you take away another $300 million this year, it's actually $280 million if we're going to be precise, that's essentially wiping out the entire profit of an industry that's critical to the well-being of the state of Connecticut. This industry has to generate a profit of 3 to 4 percent just to have the capital to invest in the future, right, to replace its facilities. This is a very capital-intensive industry. We have facilities, we have equipment and technology. If we have no profit, we have no future. There is no way that you can justify what's happening now to excessive profits. The profits are now gone. In my own hospital, Griffin Hospital, a small or medium-sized community hospital, we're doing everything we can to become more efficient. One thing we're attempting to do is to refinance our debt, to take advantage of historically low interest rates. But we have bankers now looking at the fact that over $4 million is being withheld by the state, and they're essentially saying, we're not sure about your revenue stream. We're questioning your creditworthiness. So now you can't take advantage of those historically low interest rates and reduce your operating expenses so that you can continue to serve your community. And what are those things that we do to serve our community? In, in addition to taking care of sick people every day, 24-7, regardless of their ability to pay, we're identifying needs in our community. We've looked at the fact that five years ago, the mortality rate from breast cancer in our community was above the state average. We intervened and we brought that down to below the state average. We found out that mortality from lung cancer was above the state average, so we started a free lung cancer screening program for heavy smokers. We screened over 500 people in the last 18 months. We found 10 individuals that were walking around with lung cancer 
that if we didn't screen them, they would have been found at stage three, at stage four, and likely they would have died. Through that screening process, we found 10 individuals, eight of which were found at stage one and stage two, and our intervention has, will cure their cancer and they will survive. Doing what we're doing now takes away the ability of Griffin and every other hospital in Connecticut to meet the needs of community, and we're talking about lives. We're talking about the ability to invest in the future of Connecticut's hospitals. Do not get distracted by the rhetoric that says hospitals are making excessive profits or somebody or some group of people are overpaid. That's a distraction, folks. Look at the numbers. Go to the Office of Healthcare website, or Healthcare Access website. Look at the financial results for yourself. Add up the numbers. It is not sustainable. We are fracturing the foundation of this industry that this state relies on, that community residents rely on. We have to do something now. Every single day, you heard from my colleagues, every single day hospitals in Connecticut are losing money. And at some point, they will not have the resources to continue in operation. We have a moratorium that says hospital can't, mer can't merge in the state, which was imposed recently. If they can't merge, they can't be acquired, what are they going to do? Frankly, if you've taken away their profit, you've diminished their cash balances, and they have no way to survive unless there's an infusion, but nobody can help them, help me understand what we're supposed to do. That's what we're dealing with today. That's why we're here. That's why we're so passionate about this issue. And again, thank you for everybody who's supporting Connecticut hospitals. By supporting Connecticut hospitals, you're supporting the residents of the state of Connecticut and you're supporting the future of this state. So thank you, and I want to introduce Themis Claritis, Minority Leader in the House. Thank you, Pat, and I want to thank Pat from everyone in our area, in and around Derby, Connecticut, for what a great job he does as president of our hospital, and I am a little bit biased because not only is it my district, but I sit on the board. So I get to see day in and day out what hospitals go through, whether it be the board, people that are giving of their time, obviously not being compensated to try and make these hospitals as good as they can be. Each and every one of you that works there, that gives of their time, and you do what you do because you have a passion for helping people, a passion for helping people and making this state as great as it can be. What I don't understand is why at every turn and every opportunity there is to take a dollar away from a hospital, this state does it. And I am very proud to say that we in the House and Senate Republican caucuses, not once, but not twice, but many times, have not only taken cuts that the governor has made and restored them, including yesterday in our deficit mitigation plan. We fully restored the cuts the governor is suggesting be made to the hospitals. But we make sure that the words that we use about safety nets, the words that we use when we talk about hospitals, disabled population, people that need it the most in this state, those words are followed by actions. They're not just words, because we hear time after time in this building about we have to protect that safety net. We gotta make sure that safety net is protected. And then the first opportunity there is, there's money taken away. And I wanna tell everyone in this room, as long as we are here living and breathing, I can give you the, my word from my caucus that we will make sure those safety nets are protected because we don't have a lot of money, folks. I don't know if you realize that now. Not a lot of money. And it's going to get worse every day for the next couple of years. But what I do know is this. The same way you do in your home, when you have to prioritize where your money goes, we have to do the same thing in this state. We have to do a better job at doing it. And if that money is not supposed to go to hospitals, and people who need it the most, people that are disabled, people that cannot help themselves, then I don't know where that money should go. 
So we have to make sure, and it is your job just as much as it's our job, to make sure that your legislators and your governor are held accountable for not just saying what they're going to do, but actually doing it. We will continue to do so. We have put our money where our mouth is, no pun intended, in our caucuses, including yesterday, and we will continue to go down that road because we feel that unless this state, if we are not able to take care of the people that need it the most, then we shouldn't be in this job. We have to have the passion for what we do and the courage to do it. And people that do not have that courage should not be in these jobs. Thank you so much.